Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. A little bit of a milestone today as you are now listening or about to listen to our 10th episode release or 10th interview release. So little, it might not seem like a big deal to to you the listeners, but if you knew how long the show was in the works and the delays we went through and the learning curves we had to go through, it's a big deal to us. So Welcome to our 10th episode, and hopefully there will be many, many more. We are going to be announcing um, a few changes to the show and the format uh, in the coming weeks, but for now, uh, just enjoy the show. So today's interview is with American Olympic medalist. She's got a gold, a silver, a bronze, actually a couple bronzes, I think, Caitlin Sandino. Um, Caitlin, uh, we inter- we did this interview back in April, so some of it is going to feel a little bit out of date when we talk about the Pro Swim Series, but it was still really interesting talking about how she picked it. She was one of the team captains for the for the Tier Pro Swim Series there, which was super fun to watch, and uh, I loved listening to her talk about her picks, which you'll come up to. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about her new company, the Laguna Fin, as well as the Jesse Reese Foundation. I think you're really going to enjoy it. The Laguna Fin, if you haven't heard of it, is the most comfortable fin in the world, uh, or flipper, as some of you may know. So if you're looking for a new training tool, it's a fin that you can actually do breaststroke with, which is crazy, and I uh, hope that you order it. If you're looking to order it, you can... Look at the show notes on our website at swimguys.com and you will be able to see uh, uh, where you can order that from. As well as the Jesse Reese Foundation, who Caitlin is uh, an ambassador for. Um, I'm not going to explain it too much because uh, Caitlin is going to do a much better job during the interview. But if you'd like to visit there and make a donation as well, um, that will also be in our show notes. So for now, enjoy the show. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is and how you got involved with it? And uh, actually, I guess the, there's yeah. the tie to the swim squad. So maybe let's well, let's do those those two things right off the bat because uh, they're both super heartwarming Perfect. and interesting. Yeah. Okay. So excellent. Okay. Yes. So um, let's see here. Twenty. Oh gosh, I have to get my years right. That's one thing I'm terrible with. So 2012, Mm -hmm. um, I met Jessie when she was first diagnosed and she was, um, I actually got tied to her and her family because she was a local swimmer. So Mm -hmm. she was on the um, Michigan Matadors, which is obviously a huge program. And at that time I was just coaching like a really small little team, um, in the first pool that I ever swam in and one of the families there was telling me about this little girl that was just diagnosed with these terrible cancer it's very rare and they're going to hold a fundraiser for her and there's anything that you know maybe I could give to her to encourage or like you know sign something or a picture or anything just to kind of send her way so I went home and I found like my last like um you know, like national team warm-ups, like sweatsuits or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I gave them like a USA one, signed the back of it, and gave it to the mom to give to the family. And then after that, they invited me and wanted to know if I could get any other like Olympians or national team members or any swimmers uh, to attend her fundraiser because obviously medical bills were going to be astronomical. Mm-hmm. So I went down there and I brought um, some fellow Olympians and national team members um, with me. And that's where I first met. Jesse and her father and at that time um Jesse was you know really weak she was in a wheelchair and she had to wear these glasses um that was kind of like part of like some of the vision issues that she was having and she had one of the um you know the masks over her mouth and her dad kind of had to like pull her up for me to like sign her sweatshirt and got to take a picture with her uh but obviously just very very um frail state and when I met Jesse's dad you know I just remember he's got these like piercing blue eyes and you could just see so much pain and and sadness in his eyes and I just I just was like I don't know what I can do but if there's anything I can do please let me know and that was kind of my only interaction with him at that time um that was the one and only time I met Jesse and uh I just kind of followed her story on social media she um her parents let her have like a Facebook account And she was like doing all her updates and whatnot. And then um, she came up with this, you know, this plan to do joy jars. She wanted every single kid fighting cancer to get one. They're 64 ounce containers and they're age and gender specific. And they're just meant to, you know, bring boosts of joy. 
And um, that, what I think, is just so tremendous. I'm here it is an 11-year-old girl who was told that, you know, you have two inoperable brain tumors. And, you know, she's just thinking about the other kids and what can she do to cheer them up. And this is what she wanted to do. So she hand stuffed and delivered 3,000 of them. And she, um, unfortunately, only... Um, fought her fight for 10 months and two days before she passed away mm-hmm. um, and then her family was just like adamant about continuing what jesse started so i am um, i attended her celebration of life um and it was at this massive church out in southern california called saddleback I saw and it the was video like literally yeah. Yeah. oh my gosh standing room only and yeah. like they had to like move people to other parts and stream it in and Eric led it, and I was just like, you've got to be joking. This this father is doing this right now, like, you know, with his background of a pastor. I couldn't believe he was doing his own daughter's ceremony. Um, and I, it was kind of an ironic timing thing. I was doing this photo shoot uh, for a French bathing suit company, and um, the photographer had heard about Jesse's story and her motto of Nigu, and he's like, wouldn't it be cool if we did something like with, like, body paint that says, like, Nigu all over your body, and it like, could kind of come out of the bathing suit. So he hired, like, a really great friend of his that's a tattoo artist, but she did it with, like, paint, and we posted this, like, really rad picture, and the photographer's name was Don Lee. He's like, hey, I, whatever you guys want to do with it, Caitlin, go for it. So we just put it on, like, social media just like in in remembrance of in honor of jesse and one of eric reese's good friends um is in the swimming community and he follows me on social media and he saw it and he showed eric and then eric just sent me a message you know it's via facebook like wow thank you so much it's great and i'm like look i don't know if this can do anything but if it can you have the right to this picture you know she's in our thoughts and it just like turned into this conversation of back and forth back and forth back and forth and um i eventually just went into the foundation and met with eric and this was like a probably two months after Jesse passed. And um, he was asking if, you know, I've ever done a hospital visit before and if I'd want to do one with them, this would be their first one since Jesse passed. And, um, you know, I'd never done a hospital visit before and I didn't know what to expect. And we went back to um, Chalk uh, Children's Hospital of Orange County where where she was doing her treatment. And it was um, another Olympian, uh, Jason Lezak was there. Uh, Chloe Sutton was there. There's a couple other swimmers from the Natadors that came. And just from day one, I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. Just being able to deliver these joy jars and to bring joy and to interact with the kids. And, you know, it's, it's crazy that the amount of uh, positivity and optimism that the children have is just, it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, it's really, it's hard. It's harder for me personally to see the parents, um, obviously, because, you know, their world has just been rocked or the grandparents. Um, But from that day, I knew I wanted to do more. And then one conversation led to another that I became their national spokesperson and started traveling the country to um, do all these hospital visits and I just started asking like my own friends and my own Olympic community and Trojans from school like would you guys you know any cities that we are going to if they'd want to join me and we just kind of started growing like a roster of like other athletes that have a heart for this cause and um, it gosh I've been with them for five and a half years now and I've done over 160 hospital visits that's amazing and um Yeah, you know, so ironically, today is my three-year wedding anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. That's actually why I asked to push our meeting, because I can't really see my husband tonight. Our schedules are opposite, so I'm like, oh, we get a coffee date. Can I take my my call a little bit later? (laughs) Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I feel terrible now. You should bring him on the show. (laughs) I know. He's fabulous. Um, And so Eric Reese texted me this morning, because he was actually the pastor at our wedding um, three years ago, and, you know, it just became so close to this family and you know they I I get thanked a lot for doing what I do with this foundation but you know it's I can't thank this foundation or this community enough for allowing me to do it because it's been life-changing for myself and it's been so amazing to really tie yourself to a cause I think a lot of Olympians or athletes get asked to do this do that do this and you come you I don't know, sign a couple autographs, take a couple pictures and you leave. And there's no like real like emotional connection and being, you know, really connected and involved with what it's just what I could put all my heart and passion into. And that's not to say I don't do things for other foundations. I a hundred percent do, but this is like my home. This is like, you know, my family outside of my own family. And just the, the one, I mean, there's so many incredible causes out there, but this is the cause that, you know, I, I'm going to put my, my passion and my time and my effort into and you know it's, it's, a, so it's cool. amazing you had mentioned a, a couple minutes ago about how you didn't know how the 
how the the parents were able to go on and and I I, right. I really understood that I I understood that line of thinking until I had kids myself and then I was uh -huh. one of those things where I was like oh the kids kind of gave me a different purpose and I even had a I have a six year old son and we were talking yesterday oh. and and uh, he was t telling me that our younger son was cuter than him and uh, <laughs> and uh, he was he not in a jealous way but I was I was just trying to say no that's not true you were a super cute baby too and you had a very <laughs> special job you you taught me how to like I had to learn how to be a dad you're the one that taught me that it's a really interesting conversation and then when Jesse passed it, it sounds like her project kind of gave not only her a purpose but a lot of other people including yourself um oh 100 percent. her family you know it was like how do you grieve how do you deal with this yeah um and just like keeping her memory alive and what she wanted when she started and yeah i mean this community of the volunteers and staff and corporate sponsors and individual sponsors i mean there's so it's it's to me with mind blowing is an 11 year old girl started this yeah you know, wasn't yeah. a celebrity was an olympian well didn't have like a thousand followers on youtube or whatever you know yeah. what i mean like this was so pure, organic, innocent, um, genuine. It's just, and it's a world. I mean, we're uh, the the foundation is worldwide now. I mm -hmm. mean, how incredible is that? And then, you know, I got this email. Um, you know, Lenny Kraselberg was somebody that I looked up to, obviously in the swimming community. He was a Trojan, you know, but a couple of years older than me. And yeah, Lenny you, had you were on an Olympic team together too, were you not? In 2000? yes, two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Yes, correct. And, um, you know, he had sent me an email, like, I, I love what you're doing. I would love to get involved. And to me, that was just like, because, you know, for a lot, for the beginning part, I was really like going after, like trying to, like recruiting, really, like getting people to, you know, be on the Jesse Reese, we just call it, like our Nigu team or team Nigu. Yeah. But to have Lenny, like, you know, come and ask me more and wants to get involved more. And I mean, it, it was just phenomenal. And he's gotten so involved and in, which kind of brings us now to the swim squads, um, yeah. you know, getting to pick a charity of our choice. And I'm like, well, obviously I know what I'm doing. And then USA Swimming's like, oh, Lenny's doing that too. I was like, oh gosh, you're going to let us do that? Like, oh yeah, definitely. Cause that's, you know, the cause he wants. I'm like, okay, so I got a 50, 50 chance. Yeah. That's one, <laughs> that's one squad. It's going to be donating to the Jesse yeah. Reese Foundation. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fantastic. So uh, just before we touch on the, the swim squad, I just want to say to yeah. anybody, anybody listening, um, uh, we're going to have uh, links to the Jesse Reese Foundation, which is the negu.org website. Um, we're going to make sure that that link is in the show notes. So anybody that wants to donate, um, please uh, go, go to our website. And in the show notes, um, all those links will be there to, to donate as well. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, now let's touch on swim squads. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. So you're one of, I, I, I'm going to get you to explain swim squads, but you're you're one of the, the, the team captains. I guess there's one of four. And uh, yes. uh, last I checked, your team was doing exceptionally well. Um, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so can you explain a little bit about how the swim squads works, and and uh, and then I want to get into your picks. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, I was presented with this opportunity. Well, I would like to call it an honor just to be considered. So, there are four legends captains: mm -hmm. uh, Natalie Coglin. Lenny Kraselberg, Jason Lezak, and myself. So first and foremost, I was just absolutely floored to be in the mix of such legendary swimmers um, and to do something that they've never done before. You know, um, very, you know, it's fantasy sport for swimming, very yeah. similar to fantasy football. Um, we had a draft that was, um, that coincided with the, 2017 uh, golden goggles yeah. and we had the list of the uh, national team members um mm -hmm. and so about uh, i think we have 28 on each team and it, it ran like a draft you know first pick was you know went up to i had last pick but that actually i felt like worked well because i got two in a row you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of strategy and a lot of thinking and then you know, obviously you're like, oh, yeah, Katie Ledecky will be first pick or Caleb Dressel. It's like, well, no, like they're still in college. They're going to miss. So all the swims, all the swim drafts take place. Um, they coincide with the um, the pro series. Mm -hmm. So there, if the pro series and then the, the final meet of the season is like the nationals, you know. So there's only six meets. Yeah. So the first like two, three of them, you're like, well, I don't know. Our college swimmer is going to be there. Probably not. Not a good chance. And, you know, they kind of after NC2As, you kind of have to get back into the groove of things. So, yeah. you know, it's very strategic. You know, you a lot of times those pro athletes were kind of like the people that you're like, okay, well, they probably have more of a chance of being at more of the meets, yeah. um, post-grads, obviously. So, yeah, it was it's fun. It brings so much excitement. 
um, you know, for me personally, but I, I, it's great to see that the swimming community is embracing it. Yeah. Um, and other people like wanting to, you know, do their own picks as well. So I think it's like what, what you had kind of mentioned earlier, um, you know, somebody gets a lot of love every four years, but yeah. why not in between that? Yeah. So I think this really could, you know, light a little fire to get that excitement, um, you know, on a yearly basis because there's a, there's fast swimming every year, not just every four years. I know it's uh, that's what it, it drove me crazy because I, I grew up in a time where there, it was never hardly ever on the radio, and in Canada it was hardly ever televised. So if we were lucky enough to get it on oh. NBC, we'd get something, but. Uh... Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not as big. but uh, So your first pick, let's get back to, I don't want to get too far away from the swim squad because we don't have too much time, but your yeah. first pick was, was Leah Smith, right? It was. Is she, she has to be, and this isn't a knock on her, but she, I think she has to be the most underrated swimmer in the States right now. And, and only because she's in, in the time of Katie Ledecky, but... She it's is exactly what phenomenal. I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's uh she's almost it's almost like an underdog that should not be labeled that. <laughs> <laughs> totally, so like completely crushes it. But unfortunately, it's one of the exact same vets as Katie Ledecky. Yeah. Um, but to me, when I meet, it's funny that you say that because. I was like, oh, who's Leah Smith? And I was like, oh, dang, this girl's close to Katie Ledecky. Nobody's close to Katie Ledecky. I know, yeah. You know, but yeah, unfortunately, she's going to be in that shadow. But I was so excited that I was able to pick her as my first pick. Yeah. She was the first female to get picked. And, you know, because she wasn't in college, to me, I was like, oh, you know, I, I didn't pick I didn't, I picked her over Katie. Like Katie was on the board, mm -hmm. uh, but I just felt like she was going to be at more meets. And um, unfortunately she had, um, had a pass on the first two of them, but she swam phenomenal at the last meet and she crushed it. I mean, she was not just winning by a little, she was winning by a lot. And I'm really, really impressed by her. I think she's got great energy. She's so positive. She's always smiling. Um, I, I really predict big things in her future. Yeah. That's great. And who was your, who was your second pick? You know, I went with Michael Andrew for my second pick. I, um, cause fifties are on the board and all strokes. Yeah. So he was going to be kind of like my sprinter, you know, my go-to sprinter. Um, and you know, I, I knew of who he was, but I had to kind of familiarize myself with my, you know, my picks a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And the more research I did, I was like, wow, this, this kid, because ultimately he's a kid, yeah. um, is very impressive. And I have a feeling that he would be going to a lot of these meets because, you know, he's not in college. He gave up his eligibility. Um, he likes to race. He's going to do a lot of, um, you know, the 50 strokes. And I thought he could be like, good for like being a flex um, pick and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that was my second pick. Yeah. And uh, well, it's a, that's a good pick. I'm surprised he wasn't taken a little bit earlier too, just because he does a lot of, he, he every every meet I read about that he's in, he does a lot of events and oh, he does. Yeah. and that's why I'm always kind of like, uh, so what events do you think you'll actually swim? Uh, can I get a little inside scoop? Because I don't want to put you in something and be like, I got to scratch it at night, or <laughs> <laughs> so try to get like the low down with my swimmers beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, yeah, I guess I guess this is a chance for you to kind of meet a lot of these swimmers too, because oh so, my gosh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yes, and you know, because it is a different generation, and um, it's been so fun to like interact and engage and get to like ask their opinion. Like, I feel like I'm starting to know my team well enough that I'd be like, "Hey, who do you think, or what do you think I should put in this race, or do you think I should put you in free or butterfly?" And that's been really fun, and um, just getting to know this generation of swimmers, and then um, with a relationship that I have with a swimsuit company called Hardcore Swim, mm -hmm. um, uh, they uh, volunteered to make my team some Santa no Squad robes and towels, and um, it was really cool to be able to like kind of gift them with something for my postgrads and um, my eligible swimmers. That oh, stuff so they're getting really they're getting too. swag bags that make the other they team got jealous. Some, yeah, right? they got some. Standard as swag. I'm the only captain that's done it, so I think that makes me the favorite captain. I, it must. <laughs> <laughs> who said you can't? Who said you can't buy love? <laughs> I know. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I know yeah, I, the fact that you guys are all doing it for a worthy cause, like you're you're trying to to raise yes. money for your different foundations. Does that stop the trash talk? I mean, yes and no. <laughs> Please tell I me mean, there's some really good trash talk going on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Natalie, 100%. Yeah. Um, Jason is – Jason's hilarious. Like, Jason is, like, always, like, wanting to make trades or he's, like – he's, like – Can he, you do that? Jason – Um. yes. Yeah, USA Swimming does allow trades. They have to be agreed upon. And once you trade, they're your summer for, like, rest of the season. Because Jason has, like, the weirdest, like, strategy. He picked, like – I think he thought he was doing, like, a breaststroke relay. He had, like – 
all brush strokers. <laughs> and it's like, Jason, like, you need, like, a backstroker, you know? Yeah. Like, so he gets these memes. He's like, oh, I'm a backstroker. Who wants to trade me one? I'm like, nope, sorry, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're and on it, your own. So not only did he choose the one, the one stroke, but he chose the stroke that uh, tends to attract the least versatile of the... You know, like you get a lot right. of like backstroke freestylers or you like breaststrokers or breaststrokers. They don't really do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so funny. But Lenny's pretty quiet, but he's like in person. Like when I see him, there's a little bit of trash talk, but we have the same cause. So it's like, I'm always telling people like, obviously root for Santa and squad, but if you need somebody else to root for, you can root for Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> so does he, uh, does he, does he hit you up for trades first because it's for the same cause and hoping that you can balance <laughs> each other out? We all we all go kind of radio silent when Jason starts talking about trades. Nobody's on board with it. <laughs> <laughs> have, have there been? Has anybody agreed to a trade yet? No, no. but like every meeting gets put on the table by Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hilarious! But no, it's been a blast. Like I said, I think it's really great that U.S. is somebody trying to step outside the box. Um, you know, they're doing some things different at the swim meets. Like they did like a co-ed mixed relay um, within the squad. So it was like four by 50 Santa Ana squad versus, you know, the three other captains and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing like this mystery medley where they don't know what I am order they're going to have until right before they get to the blocks. So they're changing it up. You know, they're making it more exciting. And like I mentioned too, the 50 strokes of, you know, all, all four strokes as well. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I really want to get to some of your swimming days. That was the real reason why I wanted to talk to you. The okay. other stuff is great. It's a it's a it's a great bonus. But um, I I loved I loved refreshing myself on on your swims and the teams that you were on. Um, and we're not going to be able to touch on everything, which is why I'm I'm hoping that you're having a good time and we'll agree to come back. But uh, so, <laughs> yes, definitely. So how about we go back to like um, a little bit into your to your age group days, like before you went to you know your collegiate years and international days. And and can you touch us upon like how you got involved in swimming and maybe some of the people that you looked up to when you were swimming? Um, who were who yeah. were some of the people that you admired after you got after you got involved? Um, so, you know, basically born and raised in Southern California, you kind of get thrown in a pool or thrown in a beach or thrown in a lake. And um, I was a huge water baby from the start. And I have uh, two older sisters that we have quite some age difference between us. And um, when I was two weeks old, I got my first limit because my sister was racing. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what just got me in the sport. I joined the summer league team when I was five. And, you know, I was pretty good from the start, like yeah. naturally. Um, I mean, wasn't like incredible but was like you know good like i moved well yeah. um and i didn't join a year round like a club team until i was like nine or ten um but i was just super athletic i was a huge tomboy i loved all sports was a really good soccer player a good runner um so i split my time between swimming and soccer and cross country um all the way until like end of junior high or middle of junior high Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until like high school where I was like, okay, I'm really focused on swimming. So I think a lot that had a lot to do with my success because I didn't come from like hardcore, like swimming, only swimming since I was six years old. That's all I did. You know, my parents were like really awesome and open-minded about being like well-rounded and letting me try all these different sports. And, you know, I'd swim three days a week and play soccer two days a week. And on the weekends, it was either a soccer game or a, um, a swim meet, or I do both, you know, like change the car and go on to the next one. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it, I, I was much older once I started like really paying attention to swimming and like having like idols and whatnot. So I didn't really follow swimming that much per se. I was like really into soccer and I, you know, really looked up to Julie Foudy and Mia Hamm and loved watching the World Cup and whatnot. But you know, the swimming community, um, you know, where I was from, you know, Amanda Beard was like, you know, our, our rock star. And oh, so, yeah. you know, not having a huge age difference with her, I was like, wow, like she's so young and she's swimming in the Olympics and, you know, obviously that teddy bear that she always carried around. And then um, before I knew it, I was like friends with her just because of like swimming and swim meets. And we were like basically, you know, on teams, a town away from each other. Um, but, you know, for the current swimmers, I looked up to Janet Evans and Summer Sanders, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously similar events and um, strong, powerful women and, um, you know, setting records and whatnot. And then also Janet being, you know, locally from where I was from as well. Um, those are the, the swimmers that I, that I looked up to. And when you, when you started to, 
I guess, realized that you wanted to take this further and you were more involved in the community. What kept you going? Were you more intrinsically motivated, like you just wanted to give your best, or were you more external, where you, you just wanted to win and beat the other people that were beside you? What what was the driving force for you? And, you know, I was um, one of those swimmers that, you know, I just came to practice. I worked really hard. I, I did what I was told. I didn't really, like, ask questions or argue with my coaches. I had it a great relationship with my coaches. And I feel like, you know, you always kind of like things that you're good at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I started seeing success from hard work and it's, it's fun to win, you know, and it's, it's fun to get attention. You know, you're getting asked to do interviews or be in magazines or, yeah, I remember like my first like photo shoot for like the local like newspaper, you know, and I'm like 15, you know, and it's just like, wow, like this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and ultimately it was always kind of like the next, that was always the goal like oh I want to get my junior cut okay I got that I want to get my senior cut oh okay I got that I want to make my Olympic trial cut oh my gosh could I could I actually go to the Olympic trials you know so it's always kind of the next thing but like in high school like honestly um getting a scholarship was a huge goal you yeah. know just knowing like my family's you know financial situation and you know kind of like what my, my sisters had to do for college I was like you know my, my meal ticket to a great university is going to be swimming yeah. um, and that was what kind of really drove me because I knew that you know education is a big deal and I needed to, needed to use that swimming to help me to get in um, and so honestly in high school it, re it really was you know swimming swimming to make it to college and just the way the cards played out, I ended up making my first Olympic team when I still was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was pretty surreal, you know, to be going into my senior year of high school and just, you know, coming to school late because I was at the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty awesome. <laughs> That's and a was, really good excuse, right? <laughs> was, the, was the Olympics, uh, that Olympic team, was that your first national team as well? And, you know, I actually, my first international swim meet was 1999, the Pan American Games in Winnipeg, Canada. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> was that a good pool? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. You know, it was amazing. And I have very sentimental um, feelings about that because that was the last time I saw my grandfather. So he came out to that meet. He was like my biggest, most proudest fan there. And then he passed away shortly after that. And he got so to see you win a couple was... events too. There was the... He did. Yeah. My mom and dad said he was just, you know, could not, he was on cloud nine, couldn't be more proud. And um, so that, that meet is um, very special to me for many reasons. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was the kind of first time I realized that, I didn't think I really realized how good I was until then. Because I was like, oh, well, here I am. I made my first international team. I'm 16, but I had made it like the year before that. It's like when they do those like really early trials. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, well, I don't really know how good I am. And then I got there and then I, you know, I won both my races and I broke like Pan American records. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe I can do this international swimming. And then the next year was the Olympics. Yeah. And, uh, and do, you, do, you, do you have a, a favorite national team that you were on um, in terms of like the, the group of people, the, the event you were at? Um, I know those are, I guess that's technically two different yeah. <laughs> questions, but. Uh... No. Yeah. You know, 2004 Olympics, nothing beats it. I yeah. mean, just from my teammates to my sponsors to how I performed um, to my family being able to be over there. Like literally everything about that me is just a fairy tale for me. You know, I, yeah. I mean, obviously winning all golds, is, <laughs> you know, but to get one of every color and a world record and American record and the teammates that we had and what a strong team we were and to be in Athens, Greece out of all places. I mean, come yeah, on, that's, like, that's pretty me, like, is that, and and who who, was the, who were the captains on on the team for for that? Uh, um, er, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, is Lindsay for sure? Yeah. Was it would it be Tom Mouchard or is that two thousand? I'm getting my Olympics confused right now. Uh, he was. Well, Lenny Lenny was two thousand four too, wasn't he? So yeah. it was Lenny and Lindsay. Yeah. All I can really remember is Lenny and Lindsay right now. Shoot, yeah. and I can't remember the other two. Well, I'm sorry to oh, cut gosh, you off guard. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what's so funny is that I have a terrible memory. So, yeah. like, I've had to do – I have this um, project that I'm working on that I've had to pull up some, like, past. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't remember anything. Like, I have the worst memory. Yeah, my yeah. mom always was like, if you ever need help, let me know. Like, my mom's like my memory for me. I'm, I'm like, how do you remember this? And I don't. <laughs> I have a great memory for numbers, but I'm terrible with names. Like, if I go to um, if I go to my wife's, like, uh, <laughs> Christmas, like, on, on my wife's side of the family, I have no idea who yeah. any of those people are. And I've been married for like 15 years, 14 years. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I, can't, I can't do it. Um, so uh, I guess, I, okay, so the 2004 Olympics, a very special time. 
and uh, obviously great races. You know, the you got the silver and the four hundred AM, which I, I'm gonna guess has to be one of your favorite races ever. Um, oh, hands down. <laughs> okay, I was my other guess would have been the you know anchoring that relay. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean they're very close, but they're so different. Like yeah. how do you compare like an Olympic gold? I mean that's uncomparable. Yeah. Um, how you compare a relay to an individual? Yeah. Um, for me, my individual, my 400 IM was uh, um, a personal accomplishment. Like if I would have, I would have given myself a personal gold <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. of everything that I had gone through and a plateau, a plateau that I was stuck out for like four and a half years and I could not break 440 for the life of me it was so frustrated and I wanted to quit that event altogether but Schubert wouldn't let me and so to like <laughs> look up the scoreboard and I was like yes I got silver by like 12 hundredths of a second but I saw my time of 434 and I just went like ballistic like everybody probably thought that I thought that I won yeah yeah <laughs> but, like, I remember I watching just, like, that I race I did and... I won I personally yeah. won <laughs> yeah and uh, and that was uh that was against uh Yana Yana Klachkova right Correct. That's yeah. correct. Was she like in terms of people that you raced on the international stage? Was she the one that you kind of were up against most consistently? Yeah, I would yeah. say that because yeah. then I tried to start swimming the two hundred IM after that Olympic. So I would sw- I swam it at a couple internet. Oh, maybe. Mm. So then I would have run the two hundred IM as well. Yeah. So we how did it feel? Distance. Fast forward yeah. three years to the the university games where you. Uh, you beat her. <laughs> oh, it felt so good. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It was like, ah, and it was like a 200 AM too, which I like, wasn't even that good at. It was just like, oh, finally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. 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 But there was like a language barrier and she tried to tell me like she was like sick or something. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just accept that you got spanks. <laughs> yeah. Let me just have this one. Okay. Just let me have this. <laughs> nope. Why, why do you have, yeah, I don't understand the excuses, but whatever. Whatever. You did, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, you did it, and uh, and uh, 2004 was obviously amazing. I remember watching those events, and that was, you know, that was uh, really the uh, there was a there was a lot of powerhouses coming out in 2004 between Aaron Pearsall and you know Ian Thorpe yeah. and Michael Phelps, and then like there was so many strong performances on the women's side as well. It was just that, yeah. that was an amazing Olympics. That, uh, that team was just so strong, so fun, like, yeah. and just the energy was just. I mean. I feel like every team probably says it, but it's just, it was just so electric. Like I just felt like everybody got along and everybody was so supportive and the team would just go nuts in the stands. And that. I mean, like I said, I'm sure everybody says that. And if I think back on 2000, I'll probably say the same thing, but I was just so young and like everything was like a blur then. Yeah. Um, so 2004 sticks out a little bit more to me at that time. And I think too, just being older and being a little bit more mature and um, taking it in a little bit more and, you know, you just never know when your last swim's going to be or your last Olympics. And mm-hmm. um, 2004 is very special so for did many the pre- reasons. Did the pressure feel a lot different from 2000 to 2004 because of that experience? Oh, oh totally. I felt like in 2000, I had like all these eyes on me. It's like, oh my gosh, 17 years old, this hot shot distance swimmer, like, you know, all eyes on me. And then 2004, I mean, I was hurt for pretty much all of my college career. I didn't swim well until my junior year. Mm-hmm. And then that was the year before the Olympic trials. And then like all of a sudden I was back on the scene. So I just didn't have like, I was like that dark horse or like, you know, the outside smoke and just not, I didn't feel eyeballs on me. Like in 2000, I just like, I was starting to get like weirded out by how much I felt like people were looking at me. Yeah. Um, and then 2004, it was kind of like, I was almost like kind of forgotten. Like, oh yeah, she does swim again, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and I was just like having the time of my life. You yeah. know, I just signed, um, gone professional and signed a contract with Nike and got a couple other good gigs. And, you know, I was just, I honestly was just having so much fun yeah. because I think I was just so extra grateful because I did have so many obstacles to overcome to get there. Yeah. So it's just, it's sweeter. It's sweeter when, you know, the ride was really bumpy to get there. Yeah. And, and speaking of the injuries, what, what was driving those injuries? Was it, uh, over, over training or was it, uh, um, you know, just pressure it, you put was, on yourself or no, you know, I had a stress fracture in my intercostal muscles, um, in my back and it was the weirdest, most fluke thing. Couldn't even tell you how I did it, not why I did it. Um, you know, I had really bad asthma and it cost a lot and that didn't really let my intercostal muscles heal. So it was like a lot of things that had to like, one thing had to be fixed with another thing to be fixed and, you know, and just completely getting out of the water. Like after my freshman NC2As, I didn't swim for the whole rest of the summer. Like I've never taken that much time off in my life. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, sophomore year was just a, like a whole rebuilding year. It was like learning to swim again. Like I'd go to the pool and like put a snorkel on and swim at 200 and that was like a big day. And I was yeah. like, okay, we're done for today. 
Um, so basically like, it's kind of like learning how to walk again. Um, you know, obviously for swimming. So, uh, you know, it was the typical shoulder injuries that I feel like every single swimmer will tell you that they felt or have dealt with. And then the back injury was just a freak, a freak thing. Just one morning I woke up, I remember it was my freshman year. I was like plugging in my Christmas lights, like in my dorm room. And I just felt my, my back just felt like, ick. Mm. um, and then, and it was just like an excruciating pain that like took my breath away. And, um, took a long time to get diagnosed with it. It wasn't like an obvious answer. It was like a lot of tests. Um, ultimately it was just a ton of physical therapy. And like I said, getting my, um, asthma under control as well. So it was so frustrating, but you know, it makes you stronger. It gives you a little bit more of a story that people, you know, can lean on or make you a little bit more relatable. Um, and, and for me, which is so ironic, it comes full circle. Like the Jesse Reese foundation's motto is Nigu, never, ever give up. And my swimming career was, you know, the epitome of me gear. Like there were so many times where like, I am done. I cannot do this. I'm in so much pain. Nobody knows what's wrong with me. You know, I had a car accident right before my junior NC two A or my sophomore NC two A's. It was kind of like one thing after another. I was like, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I want to make another Olympic team. And so, you know, really for me between 2000 and 2004, that was like my Nigu journey of like never, ever giving up. It's yeah. just like, yeah, it could have easily been done probably in like, 2001 2002 but I kept trekking on and you know 2008 didn't go as well as I would have planned you know I would have loved to make my third Olympic team but Mm -hmm. just wasn't in the cards but I just believe everything happens for a reason and um had an amazing experience being out in Michigan and made some amazing friendships and um you know learned a lot about myself and it's it's good for a SoCal girl to get out of SoCal and um go live outside of it and kind of grow up as an adult or a young woman as well and just kind of adds to my story a little bit more. <laughs> well, it's a great story, and uh, thank, you. thank you so much. And I know we're. Or I I don't want to take keep you over on time, especially knowing that it's your anniversary. So, no, oh, um, thank you. <laughs> so let's touch on on one more thing, and then if if there's yeah, any time left, we'll do some name association or word association stuff. So, okay, um, fun. I wanted to uh, give you a chance to talk about the Laguna Fin, which I saw a quick oh, video yeah. of as well. I know there was a press release cool. just a few days ago. Um, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it and specifically how can you do breaststroke with a fin? <laughs> <laughs> that is our bread and butter right there. You know, yeah. so Laguna fin, we're based out of Laguna beach, California. Um, it is just, it, it, literally, I'm going to say, I'm going to throw it out there. It's the world's most comfortable fin. Yeah. I mean, I literally was scarred from my fins growing up, like bleeding, like having to wear socks and Vaseline and not being able to wear high heels because it would rub on where my fins were. So this is just an extremely comfortable foot pocket, neoprene, um, the fin, it's just the way that it's designed we got it figured out so you can do breaststroke in it also, which is so exciting. Yeah. Um, obviously you can do the typical free fly backs, but then you put it on for brush and you're like, holy moly, this feels amazing. Um, and the feedback that we're getting with, um, you know, obviously in general, the comfort is like people are like, oh, wow, these are so comfortable. But the brushstroke feedback is insane. Like coaches' minds are like blown. And it's cool too because we have old school coaches that are just like, you know, pretty set in their ways. And I'm like, you know, do me a favor, put these on a couple of your kids and they love them. Yeah. And then like it was so funny. I was at the one of the, uh, the pro series in Mesa last two a couple weekends ago and Lindsay Banco Mantenko was swimming and she's like, Hey, let me throw those fins on real quick. And you know, she's very much a freestyler. I'm like, do breaststroke. I'm just curious. She's like, no, you know, I don't do breaststroke. I'm like, I know, just do it. <laughs> and she did it. And she's like, Hey, this makes breaststroke fun. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Uh, you know, I got an email from a dad the other day. He's like proof, proof that the Laguna fin works. My son just dropped 10 seconds and his hundred breaststroke just got his J.O. cut in it. Um, a coach in the Midwest said that his swimmer had hit like a total plateau on her breaststroke, um, took some time off of it. Uh, these fins got mailed to him through a mutual friend, started training in it, went back, um, crushed all her IM times and is back to like her like PR at her breaststroke cut that she wasn't able to get for quite some time. So the feedback that we're getting is just tremendous. I'm so excited to be a part of this. I think it really can be or should be a game changer in the swimming community. Did you have a hand in designing it as well? No, I did not. You know, I, the, the patent had been out there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Um, I've tweaked a few things with it. Um, I've encouraged them to, you know, it's kind of funny how these things came together. Like my business partners are surfers. Mm 
Yeah. So it started from like this surfing community. So our whole thing is now this is from beach to pool and it is adjustable. And it's like, for me, like I have a summer league swim team and I have 200 kids on this team. And I can't tell you how many parents complain to me every season that they get fins at the beginning of the season. Well, their kids grow like weeds and they're getting new fins by the end of the season. You should be able to be in our fins for like six, seven years. Yeah. Um, they, the, cause the adjustability with them and the foot pocket design, like they are a little bit more expensive, but you're not buying fins every four to six months. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, um, so I was the swimming factor that came into this equation with Laguna Finn. And so with this, with my surfer partners and with my swim ties, we're, you know, we're really diving into the swimming community. And, you know, when I was working with them, I was telling them about how amazing it is for brushstroke. And it's funny, like teaching these surfers the swimming lingo, I don't think they realized what they stepped into until, you know, working with the swim world and like, wow, this is really amazing. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like take it from the beach to the pool, all, all levels, you know, you know, you're a master swimmer, you're a beginner swimmer, you're an advanced swimmer, you're a triathlete, you know, to our club teams, to our summer league teams, to our club, um, to our college programs. So we really um, believe in, in this product and, you know, we're starting, we just started and we're building rather quickly, but we're in a, in a phase of just really taking people feedback good bad ugly great you tell us you know we really want to have amazing customer service and you know give that customer what they're looking for great and where can people find it uh lagunafin.com mm -hmm. um yeah right now we are just going to go through um our own um selling we're not going to go through any um, retail at this moment but we're kind of thinking that's the next step honestly this is taking off quicker than we could imagine the feedback's been it, it, amazing like literally amazing so uh, we're kind of like all right get ready Let, let's figure this out okay. um, but it's fun it's exciting it's just um it's kind of a whirlwind but I, i'm pumped to be able to bring this to the swimming community okay well great and just like with um, the the nigu.org i'll make sure to include uh the laguna thank you lagunafin.com and the show notes so hopefully Incredible. if anybody is listening to this and they want to uh purchase it they can uh, go and check it out there so, oh, amazing. Thank you. Uh, Caitlin, thank you so much for, uh, for giving us uh, some of your time. I know it's precious, especially yeah. today. So happy anniversary again. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. What a great episode this was and what a great person Caitlin is. I was really amazed at how nice and giving she was. And I shouldn't have been. If any of you want to witness what, like how, how generous spirit Caitlin has just uh, go to YouTube and look up Misty Hyman the 200 meter butterfly from the Sydney Olympics so in that race uh, Caitlin was in that final Misty was an Amer her American teammate who won that race and the end of that race probably I don't know six and a half minutes seven minutes into the video you'll see uh, Caitlin celebrating Misty's win I don't think I've ever seen somebody so happy for someone else in an Olympic final. So if you watch that race, you'll see just how nice a person she is and how genuine it is. So I think you'll really enjoy that race. But in the meantime, uh, also make sure to check out her company, the Laguna Finn Company, and especially the Jesse Reese Foundation. I did end up uh, donating to that foundation as well. And I think, uh, I think you'll see that it's a really, really good cause. So until then, that's it for episode 10. We'll see you next week. <laughs>